83 cents a month. Yes, only 83 cents a month to receive each month the Nostalgia USA, the only digital magazine that has over 12 hours of audio and video integrated throughout each issue. Now, I know that everyone listening to this podcast now over 11 years, all free, can afford 83 cents a month. So I'm asking that everyone who enjoys my podcast subscribe to the Nostalgia USA today today, which is a real value. Think about it. 83 cents a month, you get this fantastic Nostalgia USA digital magazine and all the podcasts. What a deal. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com today to subscribe. Guaranteed, you'll be glad you did. Let's now join our featured presentation. We present Dracula. Jonathan Harker is somewhere in Middle Europe. While on holiday in Whitby with her friend Lucy Westenra, Mina waits to hear from him. Following a great storm and a shipwreck, Lucy starts sleepwalking. Dracula. Then Arthur came and I, I thank God he asked me. As you should, having turned away two worthy men already, my dear. <laughs> Lady Godalming, men, in time... Well, sadly, in not too long a time. His father's not well, which is why he can only stay so briefly. Oh, Mina, you know the joy of having a good man, a decent man, an honest man to love and cherish. And oh, I could wish I saw more of him or heard a word. It is as if he's fallen off the edge of the world, swallowed up and all for dry as dust business. Dear friend, come along. We can go up a little over the grass, and then there's a seat I often take looking down over the boats in the harbour. Come. Very well. My old friend is there before us. See on the bench near the end. Uh, the gentleman with the white hair? He's nearly a hundred, and he was a sailor. Sir, good morning. Oh, maybe it is Miss. Oh, you've a friend alongside you. Miss Murray, <laughs> Mr. Swales and I talk a lot about the old days. Oh, I, and about the fishing in the Greenland fleet. Oh, I remember them days well enough. Ice on the decks and cracking your skin and salt water burning and wind. And oh, you take a fish for your tea and think on, think on... I were on the banks then, when Waterloo were fought. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, tell my friend about the old bell, sir. Please. The old bell yonder out on the boy. See the water change his colour out there, offshore of the harbour mouth. Oh, yes. Mm. There's a reef there, like teeth. The boy rings out a bell in bad weather. Oh, it is a dreadful sound for a sailor coming in from the storms to hear it. There is a story. When a ship is lost, bells are heard out to sea. That's truth. It is. Not like these gravestones here that lie about proclaiming this and that man or woman is lying under them. Oh, what do you mean, sir? The stones must mark a burial, surely. Oh, happen they might if it's a woman. Eh? Oh, Mr. Swale, that can't be so. Oh, it is true. Graves and coffins empty as my bucky box on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this one here, Edward Spencer Mariner, murdered by pirates off the coast of China. Oh. See, and this one, Braithwaite Lowry, I knew his father. Lost in the lively off Greenland in 20. And this. John Rawlings. Drowned in the Gulf of Finland. So. Who brung them all, I ask you? Eh? Mm. <laughs> but why the stones, Mr. Swales? Comfort for relatives. Lies. See this in here. George Cannon. Mm. Said to have died falling off the rocks at Kettle Ness. Not true. Blew his brains out with a shotgun to stop his mother getting any insurance she put on his life. <laughs> he hated her. <laughs> Glorious resurrection indeed. 
never got to hell, he did. And he hoped his mother might follow him. <laughs> Suicide? You frighten me, Mr. Swales. Oh, no cause, miss. No, I must go for me tea. Oh. My services to you, ladies. Uh, good day, good day, Mr. Swales. What an imp of an old man. <laughs> <laughs> like a gnome, almost. <laughs> Dancing away down the hill among the stones that seem to all be liars. <laughs> Oh, I shall come up here to write my diary, dear Lucy. And to write to Jonathan. He would like it here. We shall come together, my dear. Often. Take care you don't wake him, child. Is he... Does he need to be tied so? He is afraid he will hurt himself. He told me he wanted to be restrained a little. Don't wake him, child. He frightens me. He talks often of his fiancée. He named her today. I shall write to her. Tell her he is safe. I will watch him. Oh. It's all right. He is only dreaming. No, no! Escape! Must escape! The window. If he can climb down... I can. Oh, God. So high. A key. He has a key in his room. I know his room. He crawled from it only this evening. The only way is down the wall and pray the ivy will hold me. I must try... Seasonal fog surrounds ship, despite barometric readings. Yes? I'm begging your pardon, sir. The fog seems to be lifting a touch. The twin decks watch have searched all over for Mr. Hans. He's not to be found on board. You're sure, Mr. Mate? Aye, Captain. Looked everywhere, including the old. There's someone go in the old with them boxes. Makes them very uneasy, they do, for some reason. Their business is to work the ship, not anything else. So, overboard? It seems so. The 
was a little blood in the scuppers after the wheel, sir. Hit his head, went over. In a flat car. In a fog, Captain. We've lost two men already, Mr. Mate. The crew are becoming concerned. Rumor. Whisperings. He fell overboard, Mr. Mate. Aye, sir. Two of them say they saw a dog, or something akin to a dog. Ah, the imagination! Drink, maybe. Cut the ration and see what they see then. Dogs! Crouched, sir. Over a figure in the scuppers where the blood... I'll thank you to keep your imaginings to yourself, Mr. Mate. We'll make way and risk the fog. Carry on, Mr. Mate. Aye, sir. And stamp on any more rumours. Hard! Aye, aye, sir. <sighs> Two men gone. Strange sightings. I don't like it one jot. Trouble is coming. Gentlemen, I think we should raise our glasses to the ladies, in particular to one lady. I second that, <laughs> to a very honest and brave little lady, and to a lucky man. Congratulations, <laughs> Arthur. Uh, what can I say? To have such good friends about one is reward indeed. To have friends who have the bigness of heart and spirit that you do. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> to Arthur and Lucy, may you both be very happy. Arthur, you make her unhappy and I'll come looking. <laughs> <laughs> I think the port is with you, John. I, I beg your pardon. Say, Jack, how was that man you had in... What's his name? Uh, Ratcliffe, was it? Renfield. That's the one. Did you hear about him, Art? <laughs> he is a case. I don't know that I'd have the courage to work with such lunatics as you do, John. Oh, come now. Most of the time they are lambs. Renfield, on the other hand, is... unpredictable, I admit. Interesting. Now, I thought at one time he loved all God's creatures. He seemed to spend a lot of time catching flies. Flies? For pets? When your mind is unhinged, as his is. <laughs> then he started to catch spiders. Big spiders in boxes. He feeds them. The flies? Exactly. I was talking with him only two days ago, and a huge blowfly came in, filthy. He snapped it from the air very quick, and before I could do anything to stop him, he ate it. Oh, come now, John. <laughs> I'm a tickled stomach enough. I is there any reason? Well, his latest pet is a sparrow. Part tamed. Easy to see how. The spiders have almost all gone. He is now asking for a kitten to play with, to feed. And then, well, who knows where it might end. Oh, I'd like to see him. W what happened? Oh, I refused the kitten. And he began again putting sugar on the sill of his window and catching flies. I looked for the bird. The attendant showed me in Renfield's bed a few feathers and a blood stain on the pillow. No, he'd eaten the bird. Raw. Feathers, feet and beak, everything. <laughs> He is, to tell the truth, an undeveloped homicidal maniac. I have him heavily sedated just now. If you wanted to observe him, Quincy, you'd be welcome to join me. A bargain. I would look forward to it as much as the adventures I've had in the South American jungles or in the pompous of the Argentine. You, Arthur? I'm afraid my father is very ill. I have only stayed this long to wish you both happiness also, and I have to return to my home tomorrow. I shall leave dear Lucy to the tender care of her friend, Miss Murray. Then, a nightcap, gentlemen, and away early tomorrow. Close the window, Lucy, dear. Leave it open. I like it open, Mina. The rain will beat in, Lucy. We must close it. We shan't sleep if we don't close it. I, I wish I could sleep. I dream and wake up and dream again. I never know if I've truly slept or not. <laughs> You're overexcited, Lucy. Your fiancé gone away so soon. A shame. He has to see his father. Arthur's sure the old man is dying. I'm sorry for that, 
But you must try to rest, dear. I'll go for a walk. I know it's stupid. I, I just feel so, so very restless. Uneasy. Lucy, get to bed and tell me how you came to meet Arthur. Go on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I will. Oh, how clever you are, dear friend. <laughs> I was to go to a dance in St. James. Mother. Bristol mate! Who's at the wheel? Hawkins, oh, Captain. The strongest helmsman we got. Then why the devil is he steering so ragged across? The weather is no excuse. Captain! Captain! Yes? Yes, Johnson? Hawkins, Captain, sir. He's gone, sir. Gone! No sign of him. Dear God, what is this? Five men left in the mate. What is happening on this ship, Mr. Mate? I own, I'm afraid, sir. It is almost as if we're cursed. Get sir. you followed and lash down those spars, Johnson. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Mate, I'll take the wheel. Aye, sir. Tail, sir. No curses. Captain, sir, I seen him. I seen him, sir, and over him. Dear God. Over him. Crouched like a huge beast. Crouched with Johnson's neck in his mouth. I swear. And him screaming. And the next wave took him over. Gone. The shape. Run, sir. Along the deck on all fours, sir. He looked back at me and his eyes. God above. I never seen such eyes. I pray. I pray. Red in the dark. Red eyes. Like blood. Waves, Mina. And the spray. Lovely. I'm afraid I'm not good company this morning, Lucy. Oh. I keep thinking... Oh, it's foolish, I know. I'm sure he'll write soon, Mina. Sure of it. Oh, it's nearly two months now, Lucy. He can't have forgotten me, can he? Oh, Mina. You know very well he will not forget you. And you know as well as I do that the post from France and Germany and... Well, all those places... It's not half as reliable as ours. So, patience. You're right. Yes. I must look on the bright side. It is not easy. Oh, my. <laughs> How this wind does blow. You were very restless in the night. Was it the storm? Oh, I dreamt a little. Nothing more. I found you by the window at one time. You would only come back to bed reluctantly. You kept muttering something. What was it? Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, dear. Have you mentioned it to Mother? I saw no reason to worry her. She seems so frail, Lucy. So weak. Oh, I'm afraid for her. She's not sound of health. We shall be blown away, Lucy, up here. I want to go to the top. Please, to our seat at the end. I declare, there's Mr. Swales already ahead of us. See? Good morning, Mr. Swales. Good morning, miss. It's a rough old day, miss. Not a day for boats to be out, and yet there is one over there. You see, eh? I can't see anything amongst those waves and the spray. And he's there. He's there. See? She, miss. She is there and no error. And heading for the teeth by the look of her. Bobbing about without a hand to manner from the set of her. She near goes about and then back again and then... It is as if no hand were on her wheel. Oh. She'll be fortunate to survive the day like that. We shall hear more of her, no doubt of it. I'm sorry for you, Mina, truly. 
You're like a daughter to me and a sister to my dear Lucy. And Jonathan will write. Be assured he will. If only I heard from Mr. Hawkins at the office, it would be something. <coughs> Nina, you remember Mr. Swales talking of that ship and saying it was in danger? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure enough. It's in the evening edition. <coughs> yes? Uh, read it to us, Lucy. What ship was this? Schooner with all sails set heading back towards Whitby Harbour with the full roaring storm behind her. Watch as shuddered as the ship came on with no attempt to tack by the rocks across the entrance to the harbour. Um, oh, one old salt said, she must fetch up somewhere if it is only in hell. <laughs> that sounds like Mr. Swales. <laughs> well, he was right. Um, the ship came on out of the sea and through white-topped waves and the crash of thunder and drove towards the rocks, veered sharply and came to rest in the harbour. Oh, God. Oh, there's more. At the wheel, a corpse lashed there. Oh. No other soul on the ship, it seems. Steered there by a dead man's hand. Oh. Mm. It rushed ashore with a great concussion and spilled spars and ropes and stays. Oh, and even as it came ashore, a vast dog leapt ashore and disappeared up towards the churchyard. The poor beast. I is there anything else? Oh, the, the corpse of the wheel had in his hands a crucifix. Is the Russian ship still berthed, dear? Over there, son. Over there. Yeah, not much left of it, though, said Thanks. Excuse me. Let me through there. Echo reporter. Thank you. Excuse me. I have an appointment. I don't have any intention of making statements for the newspapers, Mr. Pierce. I am merely the recipient of the cargo. You have some concern for the crew, surely. I am a Christian, and I hope you are, too. I shall pray for them, as any decent man would. Now, sir, if you'll excuse me, I have papers to sign and bills of lading to see to, and delivery documents to peruse, and customs dues to pay. Uh, on what, uh, sir? A cargo of what? Boxes, Mr. Pierce. Boxes. Filled with mould, it appears, from the manifest. For research purposes, they're all intact. Indeed. Do you know anything about the dog that went ashore? Dog? No, I don't. A bull mastiff. A fighting dog at that. Up over Tate Hill. Was found with his throat torn out and his belly ripped open this morning. You any ideas about that, Mr Billington, sir? I have not. Now, if you will excuse me... Funeral bell. For the captain of that ship from Russia. So sad. So very sad. Why declare? Mr. Swales is not in our place this morning. See, a friend of his has his place. Good morning, sir. There it is. We expected to find Mr. Swales. Is he sick? He's always here at this time. He'll not be now, nor never. No? Yeah. He was here early yesterday. About uh, six hour walk by. Old habits, seafaring habits, make us early risers. He was here, sitting as I am, his head thrown back, and his face, his eyes, staring, sheer terror, and his heart quite stopped. Dead? Yes. Oh. Fried, I believe. Oh, poor, poor old man. What did he see to frighten him so? My dog come up often to walk amongst the old gravestones and the memorials and such, and now... Now it is all fury and eyes starting and hairs bristling in fear. He'll not come by here now. He will not stir from the bottom of the path down there. Will not move. How do you think Lucy seems, Mina? She's resting now, Mrs. Westenra. I think perhaps she's too tired now to go sleepwalking again. I pray she is. Yes. I believe she has more colour to her face. 
more animation since you came to stay. And for that, I must thank you, my dear. <laughs> Look after her, Mina. I I'm not well, as you know. But I worry for her. Uh, Sir Arthur seems a good enough sort of man. He is of the best, Mrs. Westenra. Be calm about that. <laughs> uh, say nothing to Lucy of my concern, please. Oh. Now, take this key. If she seems to want to sleepwalk again, lock the door. Hmm? As is that, I go no further, sir. I've no liking for mad men in ones. And he got a dozen or more in there. As madness, if ever anything was. Well, oh, my bag's in. And uh, here's for your trouble. Oh, thank you, sir. Wish you good day, sir. Hold. The house next door? Been empty ever since the lunatics come by here. That's a big place by all account. There's rumour it's to be opened up again. Oh, who'd live beside a lunatic asylum, I don't know. Get up now! <laughs> <laughs> you know more than I do, Quincy, much more. Tell me, did you see Miss Westerner before you came away? No, I did not. I thought it best not to tread there for a time. Mm. Sir Arthur has the right now, and you and I, old son, are cast off like gloves by as good a woman as ever drew breath. Agreed to that. So, I bury myself in work, and you? I don't really know as yet. Hmm. Is your man Renfield still eating spiders? In the morning, you shall see for yourself. Master is coming. The 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 master is coming. In Dracula by Bram Stoker, adapted for radio by Nick McCarty, the cast was as follows. Mina was played by Phyllis Logan, Lucy by Sharon Maharaj, Jonathan Harker, Bernard Holly, Dr. Seward, Peter Blythe, Quincy Morris, Paul Burchard, Arthur Homewood, Crawford Logan, Renfield, David McHale, Mr. Swales, John Buick, Sister Agnes, Wendy Seeger, Novice, Amanda Whitehead, Captain, Nicholas Gilbrook, Mate, Ian Sexton, Mrs. Westenra, Stella Forge, 
Pierce, Mark Coleman, Billington, Raymond Ross. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The theme and incidental music was composed and created by Malcolm Clark in the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. The producer in our Edinburgh studios was Hamish Wilson.